the description of this band being a cinematic uh, symphonic metal is perfect because this is definitely a blockbuster album. It's perfect for music videos as a, as a visual album as well. How do you get started on, so, on a project like this? Because it is so incredible. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. You know, that's really uh, a credit to Jonah's orchestral composition. So I think I'll let him elaborate further on that. Um, well, yeah, the orchestration obviously plays a big role in everything. Um, we kind of halfway through the creative process of making the album realized that it would be a good idea to, to have a few songs that um, were based on the orchestration and vocals more so than just the like the guitar riffs and then adding the vocals on top of that. So um, we took kind of a non-traditional songwriting route in that way. And um, the end result is, yes, what you hear, which is something that's very uh, grandiose and symphonic and cinematic. So um, I'm obviously very influenced by composers like um, John Williams and Hans Zimmer and Danny Elfman and Thomas Newman and so forth. Um, and Steve Jablonski, too. So you you can kind of hear all of that influence uh, in the music. Definitely can. And that, that's some incredible influence you have there. Uh, for the vocals, wh wh what are those influenced by? Wh what is your background in music? I studied classical vocals for three years at the university level. I also studied for a time under Flor Jansen from Nightwish. And so my background is classical in terms of formal training, but uh, metal has always been my first love. I grew up listening to metal and it's pretty much the only type of music I want to make at this point in my life. Definitely. It, it, it's definitely beautiful instrumentals from from that side and it's majestic vocals. Uh, I can hear the Flora Jansen inspiration in there. She is be has a beautiful voice as well. Your voice is beautiful. How do you go Thank about you. both of these, these, uh, these beautiful um, instrumentals, the majestic vocals, and then you, you throw in the metal grunt in there as well? How, how is that all mixed together? You know, I think the one thing I want to hear more of in our genre of symphonic metal is a little bit more of that edge, that grittiness, that darkness, and that intensity. And you hear some of it in Epica because they have an interplay going on between their male growler and their female vocalist. Mm -hmm. But for us, I think uh, it was really exciting to have me doing both parts, to have both the dark and the light, so to speak, uh, because we create this really cool dichotomy with it. And I think that at the end of the day, each side makes the other side more powerful, you know, because there's this contrast going on. Definitely. Um, and Jonah, um, the instrumentals are, are raw, they're powerful, and at points they're very mystical and, and they're very clean. Uh, you know, how much work do you do with the rest of the band in order to create such such perfect harmony in that? Um, in the instrumentals, as in the intro and the outro and, uh, and yeah. so forth? Um, those usually come to me, uh, when I'm sleeping, unfortunately, um, a lot of the ideas, and then I'll have to get up in the middle of the night and, and go sit at my piano and, and hash it out. Um, yeah, specifically the, um, that outro piece on the album, I remember, yeah, I had to work on it in like, at like three o'clock in the morning because in my brain I was composing, um, all of the you know, the melody lines and instrumentation for every instrument within the orchestra. And so sometimes um, it's a torturous process for myself because I can't, I can't turn off my brain once it gets going. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It just, it comes from, comes from the brain. It comes from the heart. And I don't, I don't know what else to say about it really besides that uh, it's sort of a projection of how I feel. Um, and it comes how from I've the it comes from the what? It comes from the madness. You are really the mad hatter of compositions. That's for sure. Oh, the madness. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Um, so when it came to the creating process for, for this album in particular, were the lyrics written first or were the instrumentals written first? This album is almost exclusively written vocals first, uh, with one exception, which is the ballad. Uh, that was the one song where the orchestrals came first and then the vocals. But I think going forward, we're gonna keep switching back between vocals first and orchestrals first, because it really places this emphasis on the melody line either way. 
Awesome. And there's so many guest musicians in this album. It's perfect for the wide variety that's that's in the, the transcending metal genres in this album. Uh, how did that choice of getting all so many guest musicians come about? Well, the ones that that I talked to personally that uh, I had connections to, I was very excited to work with them. Uh, working with Hari Huttanen uh, from Kalma, Hammerhead, and Clown Parade in Finland. Uh, Hari is a fantastic guitarist, probably one of the most innovative young death metal guitarists out there. And he wrote a really incredible solo uh, for our heaviest track, Mother Dearest, and just a fantastic musician to work with. And then we worked with, uh, of course, uh, Tosso and Mickey, the guitarists from Leaves, Eyes and Atrocity. And they're both just fabulous guys. So good natured, so fun to be in the studio with. And then uh, for the other two, Jonah and I both knew Bill Hudson. Uh, we both have been friends with him for a long time. Jonah, longer than me, I assume. And he came in and added a beautiful, uh, very melodic, haunting solo to the ballad. And then the last one, Jake, actually, we were trying to think of the perfect tenor guest vocalist to do the duet with me on Cognitive Dissonance. And Jonah immediately came up with Jake. And I was super excited because I've always wanted to work with Jake. And so it just it was really, really exciting. Awesome. And um... Ooh, and also we should mention uh, Chris Zupa, who played some guitars on the album as well and some solos and stuff. Um, he's from the band called Terra Maze. They're an Australian band um they were on mascot label group i don't know what they're doing now but uh yeah i was in terra maze for one album and um so that's how i got to know him oh chris is fabulous i love his work yeah, yeah. he's he's a really well-known youtube guitarist too awesome. like he has a he has a channel where he does like solos and stuff like that so uh yeah uh in this album, the for Catalyst Crime, the music is so brilliant. I I would really love to uh, see a live show. How much? How, how theatrical are you guys? Your guys' live show because this seems like a huge like album. You know, it's going to be uh, our first shows. Hopefully, coming up in a few weeks with uh, Leaves Eyes and Temperance, but we don't know the situation yet. Of course things being what they are in the world. But I can tell you that when we finally do get on the road with this album, it's going to be a very uh, energetic, you know, dramatic kind of show for sure. It's going to have definitely some theatrical elements going on. Awesome. For me, it was a huge challenge to pick my favorite song, but I think I finally came to condemn me to chaos. It's, it's a beautiful song for me. I really enjoyed it. What are you guys' favorite songs? Oh, that is so sweet of you. Um, you know what? I'll let Jonah go first because I still have to think a little bit about it. Um, my favorite song is Not Even Once um, because that was the first song we did where um, Zoe just sent me vocals and then I composed an entire song behind her vocals. And we realized that that was a really um, fruitful way of, of songwriting. So uh, I really like how that one came out. And then um, also the ballad as well. Um, I really enjoy You can hear a lot of my Thomas Newman influence in there and George Winston influence as well. You know, I've been thinking about it for the past two minutes uh, and I think I'm still stuck between two. And I think I've been stuck between two for the entire time. My favorite tracks on the album are probably Mother Dearest because I get to have a lot of fun vocally and really push myself. And I love the lyrics that we did for that. And I think my other favorite song is probably Projection of My Mind because you get to hear the full spectrum of, you know, everyone gets their moments in the spotlight with that song. And I really love that. Yeah, Projection of My Mind is awesome. That That's definitely in my top three also. Yeah, I, I think having that tough decision to choose my favorite in this was uh, a very joyful process because I just got to listen to all the album over and over and over again. Uh, for As a female-fronted metal band, uh, th there aren't many that really stand out. Uh, how do you feel about, you know, having this this music, this Catalyst Crime for a project being so amazing and so uh, having this album be, like, grand? Well, first of all, you flatter us deeply, sir. Thank you. I'm so glad that you enjoyed it personally, too. That that makes me very, very happy to hear. 
you know, for us, I, I don't really feel like we're trying to stand out among other female fronted bands. We're just trying to be the best metal band we can be, you know, not just the best female fronted band, um, because that would be a little bit weird if we were always asking male fronted bands. Well, how are you going to stand out among the other male fronted bands in the genre? I know for me, like I respect so much of what other female vocalists are doing in metal. I'm really excited about Charlotte Wessel's solo career, uh, the ex-vocalist from Delane. I think everything she's coming up with is fabulous. And for us, we're just gonna be the best that Catalyst Prime can be, you know? And I, I think that we're just gonna keep pushing ourselves. Our next album is gonna take us to the next level that we wanna be at and we'll go from there. Awesome. And where can people find you guys on so social media? We have a Facebook. We have Instagram, we have uh, Twitter, we even have, and this is, this is actually really crazy, we even have a TikTok, which we feel completely too old for. Like, it's, it's really actually weird being on TikTok, but we're trying to, uh, to, to figure out this, this exciting new social media platform. And we've been joined by a couple other bands on TikTok. And whenever I talk to other bands who've started a TikTok, we're all like, yeah, we kind of feel like we're the old people at the high school party, but you know, <laughs> it's going well somehow. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys for your time. This album is incredible. I am going to be listening to it over and over. I'm, I'm definitely sure about that. And once again, thank you guys for your time. Yeah, thank thanks you. for having us.